Hello everyone, it's Kevin Ring. Uh, today I'm going to show you a few different workflows on the Event Master toolset, uh, specifically with how to deal with LED displays. So we're going to talk about a few different workflows. One of them will be uh, area of interest, the other one will be custom formats, and then uh, altering the canvas size to work with both of these. Great, enough of, enough of that. All right, let's dive in. So. As long as your LED wall is smaller than a standard output connector, we are able to do a few different workflows. So I'm gonna show you the most basic one and then we're gonna get more advanced from there. So I've created a screen destination that I'm gonna name LED wall and I'm gonna add a single link layer to it. Great. And I will add an input connector. So this is going to be the most basic sense of what um, we need to do for scaling an LED wall. I'm just going to add a connector. Great. So the fundamental thing we need to remember, though, is LED typically has a bounding area of pixel 0, 0, which is the upper left-hand corner. So in a nutshell, all we're really going to be doing is just fancy ways of scaling the LED wall and the layer. So, for example, if I do 1512 by 840, a uh, little fun fact as well, a lot of people don't realize Event Master is a functional calculator. So if you don't know the exact size of your wall, but you know the size of one cabinet, I can do like 168 times 9 and get 1512. So that's fun. So this is really what we're doing. Technically, this works. Now, of course, this would be a very time consuming process, but of course we could create a user key and have our LED sizing. So in a nutshell, that's all we're gonna really do, except that's a tedious time consuming methodology for doing this. So what we're able to do instead, or in lieu of, is if we go to the destinations contextual adjust tab, and we go to the output tab, There it goes. <laughs> we go to the output tab. Notice that there's a green raster. And by default, the raster is the size of the destination. So 1920, 1080. However, if I scroll down on the properties tab on the right hand side, here I have what's called the area of interest. Area of interest is going to do automatic scaling for me on the output and allow me to type in the exact size of my LED wall. So if I do 1512 by 840. So notice the green raster has shrunk down to become the size of the LED display. What's really cool is this will also make the test pattern scale this resolution as well. So let's take a look at what this ends up doing to me for the rest of my workflow. If I go into my switching, clear out. Sure enough, if we go to the programming page now, their gray raster is the size of the area of interest. So when I do fill HV, rather than filling the entire horizontal and vertical width of the 90 20 1080, it goes to 1512 by 840. So that's really cool. Uh, the benefit too is this workflow persists as I add more connectors. So let me do two output connectors now. Uh, not much really changes, however, we see here that in the area of interest, I now have a few problems. Let's say I'm doing 1512 by 840. So we see that we do have a gap here between our LED walls. So one option I could do, because you're gonna notice, I can only move horizontally within the raster. I could move this connector over uh, and change my offset to 408. But now that means the LED engineer has to put the XY offset into their processor, which maybe they can, maybe they cannot. Either way, this does work. That's a viable solution. That said, um, if we wanna keep everything centered at zero, zero, we are able to do that as well. What we're gonna do this time though, is we're gonna go into the widescreen tab. We're gonna go into expert mode. Expert mode now allows us to freely move the output connectors on the raster of the canvas. So I can now put this at 1512 by zero as the location, and here we go. Now, a lot of 
people who criticize the area of interest workflow aren't finishing the process yet. Um, the big takeaway is when you're on the multi-viewer tab at this point, which uh, hmm, I'll have to reset the system. When you're on the multi-viewer tab, it gives you all this excess space here, which that is correct. However, what you can do though, is if you go into the top right corner of the destination, you can alter the size of the canvas. So we see here my total canvas is 30 of 40, 1080 by viewable is 3024 by 840. So I'm going to type in 3024 by 840. And now my canvas is just the size of my area of interest. So when I go to my programming page, I no longer have the excess black area. So I've gotten rid of all that excess on the uh, on the on my multi viewer as well. So that's really cool. Uh, and I think I'm still using two canvas links. Yes. So that will also reduce your canvas links in that scenario. So uh, area of interest is great because I'm using standard resolutions. I can use SDI connectors, all that good stuff. The other takeaway is utilizing custom resolutions. So let's do that. So of course that will not work on SDI. So I would need to do this on a different connector. Let's do the same resolution, 1512840. So I'll go to my custom format tab. I'm gonna add 1512 by 840p at 5994. I highly recommend you make the naming as consistent as you can to an actual resolution. Yes, I could call it custom format one, but by calling it 1512 by 840 P of 5994, it's going to make my life a whole lot easier in a little bit. I have another video about creating custom formats, so I won't go too much into detail here, but I go into the contextual adjust tab with the custom format. I'm going to type in my VESA calculator, 1512, 840. 59.94, now defaults to version one of reduced blanking. Uh, I am going to see that this came out to 59.88. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to update this to 59.94. Hopefully that will work fine. So I now have a single link connector, 1512, or a single link uh, resolution, 1512 by 840. So I'm going to create a new destination. I'm going to go to the contextual adjust tab. And now, sure enough, 1512 by 840 will be available as a drop down resolution for me. I hit apply. Oh, 1512, here we go. And here we go. So now we have 1512 by 840. What's really cool then is if I add another connector, I also have 3024 by 840p. That also is two canvas links. So using either method, I've created my custom sized LED. Um, here's what's also really cool. Uh, so let's use this as an input connector as well. So I'm going to create a native background using two connectors, add single background. And now I'm going to apply my custom resolution to the native background, 1512840. Now, here's where I love the Event Master tool set. Well, obviously, I love it for a lot of other reasons. We can go ahead and add a background. So regardless of the method we use, the native background works fine. Because remember, the canvas and outputs, inputs, all that, they're all separated. So the system doesn't care if we use uh, area of interest, custom formats, one connector, two connectors, four connectors. It does not matter. As long as the pixel count equals the canvas, we can use this as a native background. So some people will say you must use custom formats. You must use area of interest, uh, vice versa. Honestly, um, we always say the right rig for the gig. So whichever one works best for you. Uh, once again, as you see, I'm able to use a native background uh, regardless of the format. So here's my VP resources, and that is all working good. Uh, last thing last, we do have a fun little test pattern for you. If you go to circle pattern, we do have LED mode and LED mode is going to put a raster on the size of each LED cabinet. 
Um, I don't have an image of it, but I guarantee you've all seen it before. Cool. So those are just a few little ways to manage LED displays with the Event Master Toolset. As always, like, subscribe, and all of that good stuff. Thanks.